Copy and complete the generic rectangle below. What multiplication problem does it represent and what is the product? So looking at the directions, our job is to copy. So you're going to pause and copy the um, given diagram. And then we're going to complete the generic rectangle. So we're given that rectangle. We also need to answer the following questions. It says what multiplication problem does it represent? And then what is the result? In this case, the result of multiplication is called the product, which I highlighted there. So go ahead and pause and copy that in your notebook or your paper. So I'm looking uh, for the length. So the length of the rectangle, and it has a five already given or plus five, but this, is, this uh, line over here, black, is actually a blank. Like what number would go in there, okay? So you have spaces on your paper. So those are basically blanks. Now looking at the also the width. So I'm sorry, I said length earlier, but that could be also considered. So this will be the width. And then I will go with the length sideways. If you rotate it, it will be reversed. So let's make sure we do. So I'm going to say this is the length and this is the width of the problem, which will give us the area. Now, the area inside we know, but I want to find out, well, some we know. For example, we're given this 30. So if I'm looking for the smaller width, so smaller width and smaller length, one of them is given so the five is given so what times five gives you 30 so that's kind of how my thinking will go in order to figure out um the missing part on top so since it's five times six the missing information on the top will be six i'm gonna write six um so it's thinking of multiplication and um, you can do any of the um, puzzle. I would do this one last because I don't know anything on top and anything on the bottom. So even though I'm saying you can pick and choose, I can't do this one right now because I don't know any of it. So I would, know, I would start with what I know. For example, let's do the 500. So the 500 is the total area and on the side it has a 5. That means what? So the thinking is five. Okay, so five times what number will give you 500? So 500 is the area or the yellow on the inside. So in this case should be 100. So I'm gonna write on top 100. So I'm starting to get the information based on my, the thinking of how, uh, what's given. So, um, Go ahead and continue brainstorming. So try to do it on your own. So the next area I was going to concentrate is the 800 area. And I'm looking at what's given. On the side, I don't know it yet. But on top, the length is 40, right? So right now, the thing will be 40 times what number is equal to 800. Well, we also know that if you do the reverse of multiplication, you can think of 800 divided by 40 will give me that missing piece. So either or, you can think both ways. So in this case, will be 20. So the missing piece on the side here will be 20. Now, um, let's find the area for the other ones. Hopefully you did some of them on your own. So if I highlight so you guys can know what I'm doing, let me use, I haven't used blue. So right now I can find the area for this one because I have two, uh, the width and the length. So both of them are given. So my thinking now is definitely multiplication only. So it's 20 times 100 inside to give me the area. Okay, so continue on your own. And in the directions, we were asked to find the actual result and what kind of problem we're given. So looking just for the width, I'm given 20 plus five times the length. We figured out that's 100 plus 40 plus six. So what two numbers are we actually multiplying? So this is 25 
times and this one is 146. So this is the given multiplication. And then all the numbers you would get in the middle, you want to add them to get the result as a sum. And that will be the equivalent. So finish this problem on your own.